June 1099. The First Crusade has been underway for some three years. The army of the First Crusade is now at last in Palestine, the region of Christ's birth. This is a spiritually intense time for these warriors, who are pilgrims as much as soldiers. Having spent years fighting their way across Asia Minor and Syria, now, at last, they are very near to the holiest sites in all of Christendom, the places of Christ's life and death. The Crusader army has just spent three days at Ramla. Now, they are encamped at Nicopolis, just 16 kilometers west of their ultimate goal, the holy city of Jerusalem. Godfrey of Bouillon, one of the principal leaders of the crusade, learns that a Christian delegation is on the way from Bethlehem. That night, the guards catch sight of a small band approaching the camp. To the crusader's delight, they find that these travelers are Eastern Christians, dispatched from Bethlehem, the city of Christ's birth, Joyously, the Crusaders welcomed these men from Bethlehem, embracing them as brothers. The Bethlehemites are granted an audience with Godfrey of Bouillon. They explain to him that the Christians of Bethlehem view the Crusaders as liberators, and they request that a force of knights be dispatched to their city to garrison and protect it. Godfrey agrees. The Crusaders select a force of 100 knights led by the young Norman Tancred and Baldwin of Bourke, a kinsman to Godfrey of Bouillon. The chronicler Fulcare of Chartres tells us that the following night 100 of the better knights mounted their horses and passing at daybreak close to Jerusalem hurried to Bethlehem. By dawn they reached the city of Christ's birth the inhabitants of Bethlehem process out to meet the Crusaders, welcoming them with much emotion. The chronicler Albert of Aachen describes the scene. When they knew of their arrival, the Christian townspeople came in procession to meet them with hymns and praises and sprinkling of holy water and welcomed those same Christian writers joyfully, kissing their eyes and hands. Solemnly, the Christians of Bethlehem lead the Crusaders into the ancient Church of the Nativity, where they bring the Westerners before the cave revered as the site of Christ's birth. Kneeling, the knights pray at the spot where the infant Jesus came into the world. We can only imagine the intensity of the moment. These men had fought and bled through years of unspeakable trials. Now, at last, they had come to that corner of the world where the mysteries of their faith began. Together, the people of Bethlehem and the Crusaders celebrate Mass in the Church of the Nativity. In the years to come, this is the place where the Kingdom of Jerusalem will commemorate Christ's birth each December. Tancred places his banner over the city, and a garrison is established to defend Bethlehem. Tancred and Baldwin of Bourg then depart, riding north to join their comrades in besieging Jerusalem. The following year, on Christmas, Godfrey of Bouillon's brother, Baldwin, will be crowned as the first Latin king of Jerusalem in the Church of the Nativity. Today, the Church of the Nativity is one of the most striking historical sites for the Crusades. Much of the church as it exists today was constructed during the Crusader era, including dazzling mosaics, which show both Eastern and Western influence. The church's incredible columns feature depictions of saints who were important to various Crusader groups that visited the Holy Land.
What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Whom angels greet with anthems sweet while shepherds watch our keeping. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him loud, the babe, the son of man. Shepherds guard and angels say, Haste, haste to bring him loud, the babe, the son. Hey, hey.